Call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Lori Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Our invocation today will be delivered by Craig Maxwell from Tarrant County's Auditor's Office. After the invocation, please remain standing for the pledges. Good morning, Judge. Commissioners. Good morning. Morning, Thank you for the opportunity to do the invocation this morning. If you'll bow your heads. Lord, we all come before you today with many blessings to be thankful for and many things for which we need your forgiveness. We all have issues in our lives that cause us to worry, make us question why this is happening, happening to me, wonder if life is going to get any better. Paul says in Acts 14, 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, we must go through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In our own little part of this big world we live, there are many opportunities to assist those who feel lost, alone, in need, or just need a shoulder to lean on. Many times we are in a hurry to get to the next meeting that we walk right by, a chance to change someone's day from wondering why me to I'm not in this alone. It doesn't take much to show you are a caring person. A smile, knowing someone's name and greeting them with such, or simply waiting for those on the elevator to get out before entering. Life is full of tribulations, but it also has many rewards. For those who dare to make us someone else's day, life can be a lot better. Discipleship comes in many forms. Reach out, take a chance, and who knows what a difference you might make. And you might even make that entry into the kingdom of heaven a little easier. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Craig. Craig, you should be a preacher. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Honor. Remember, before we have several announcements as it relates to the agenda this morning. In fact, we have, I believe, five announcements. Hmm. So if we can start, um, first one is under human resources. Excuse me. It's item 8E3. We are going to hold that item. Then under purchasing, item 8G1. This is bid 2018-161, which is the sale of recycled paper. There is a new court community or revised court communication in your packet this morning. Also under purchasing, item 8G3. This is bid 2018-133. We're also going to hold that for one week. And then on purchasing, item 8G7. This is 2017-129. Uh, We're going to take this up in closed session first, and we'll come back after close to vote on that particular item. And then finally, Your Honor, just a reminder, today we do have a certificate of self-insurance. When we get to that particular item on the agenda, we'll have one recommendation for the court at that time. <coughs> And that is item number nine, Roman numeral nine. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, this is our employee recognition day. We do not have any proclamations or resolutions, but I do believe there's a couple of announcements. And uh, Commissioner Brooks, I believe you had an announcement you wanted to make today. Thank you, Judge Whitley. I would like to announce and invite everyone to attend uh, Precinct 1's Healthy Lives Matter third annual Alzheimer's 
education seminar. Uh, this half-day seminar will offer peer support and resources for family caregivers and health professionals. And this year, the health professionals who attend will be able to earn continuing education credit units through our partnership with the University of North Texas Health Science <laughs> Center. This will be held on Saturday, August 18th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Tarrant County College Trinity River Campus. Uh, you may experience the Dementia Live experience, which simulates uh, what people suffering from dementia experience to give one a greater understanding of the issues involved in dementia. There will be a continental lunch, uh, continental breakfast and lunch, and it's all free to the public. For more information, you may call 817-531-5600. Or 817-370-4500, or you may register online at www.tarrantcounty.com and drill down to Precinct 1 and Healthy Lives Matter Alzheimer's Seminar. Again, that's on August 18th, Saturday. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Trinity River campus of Tarrant County College. Thank you. And I'd also like to plant a little seed. Uh, Tarrant County used to be much more active in the Heart Walk than we have been the last few years. I know last year, uh, Commissioner Brooks and I uh, uh, walked in the Heart Walk, and I hope that everybody will, uh, will look at that and consider being a part of that. This year, it is on September the 8th. Uh, it will be held at, uh, or the beginning point is Will Rogers uh, Memorial Center. Uh, opening ceremonies start at 8.30, and then the walk itself starts at 9. Uh, we're going to have, for anybody who wants to come out, and we'd, we'd love a minimum uh, kind of a contribution of $25. Uh, we've got a match up to um, $2,000, and you'll get a free T-shirt uh, if you'll come out and walk with us. But uh, we're excited about this and want to kind of rebuild our effort toward the Heart Walk. And again, that's on Saturday, September the 8th. And it is at Will Rogers and begins at, uh, the walk begins at 9, but opening ceremonies are at 8.30. And there'll be a bunch of folks all over the place out there. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, please contact Catherine Rotter in my office. She's at um, extension 1234. Real easy. We made it so she wouldn't forget where she was. <laughs> She's over there right now. Um, and then, uh, or you can uh, email her at uh, klrotter at tarrantcounty.com. We'd like, in order to be able to get the t-shirts for you, we need you to have registered by August the 28th so we can get those all taken care of and printed. So I hope that y'all will all consider. I hope you'll tell your friends. I hope maybe as a department. Uh, you'll see if you can't get out and do that because I'd like to see us get back to where we've got a huge team uh, for the Heart Walk each year. Uh, so come and join us as we uh, as we walk. Uh, now it comes to uh, well. I, before I go into that, I'm a, one more thing. I, our commissioner uh, down here uh, celebrated his 80th birthday yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we had a cake and a little celebration for him. And uh, at the same time, I wanted, I knew we were gonna have a big crowd here today. And uh, again, congratulations. You had a good Thank day, you. I think, yesterday. We surprised you a little bit maybe yeah. uh, yesterday evening. And uh, we appreciate your uh, dedication and your support of this court for over 30 years, I know now. What is it, about 31 years? Two. 32 years. 
that has, that you've been serving on the court here, and um, we just appreciate them. Before that, as was mentioned before, you uh, worked with Saginaw, and you were on their city council and mayor. So we we appreciate them. <laughs> Commissioner Brooks celebrated uh, a birthday also last week. He's not as old as this guy down August here. August the 2nd. Uh, but he's uh, 69. 69. So um, we, we've, got a, we've got a great court and uh, a lot of experience to draw from. Okay, employee recognition. As I look down this list, it's going to be quite amusing to my fellow commissioners up here this month because I feel certain that I will mispronounce many names as we're going down the list. Some of you are already beginning to laugh, I can tell. Um, for the new ones, for the five-year folks, we introduce you, you stand up, you stay standing until we get to the end uh, of that particular group and we'll recognize the group and uh, then you sit down and we'll move to the next one as I do say. Uh, if you know your place in the alphabet, if it sounds like your name, or if you know you're supposed to be next, stand up. Um, don't wait for uh, to embarrass me any more than what I will already be embarrassed. Uh, but we're going to give this a shot, and we'll see how it, see how it works for the day. One of these days, I'm going to miss that, and the senior court member is going to get to do it on his own. Five-year employees: Edward Alvarez, Information Technology. Mark Broadway, Information Technology. Mark. Benjamin Bullock, Sheriff's Office. Matthew Carroll, <coughs> Sheriff's Office. Herman Contreras, Facilities Management. Crystal Durbin, Sheriff's Office. Holly Gerber, Law Library. Connie Gilfeather. County Criminal Court Number Six. Sharon Green, Information Technology. Good morning, Sharon. Carlton Kennard, Sheriff's Office. Macretia McIntosh, <coughs> Sheriff's Office. Freddie Mentor Jr., Mentor Jr., Sheriff's Office. Judge Jesse Navarras, judge here, 231st District Court. Richard Porter, Information Technology. Rick Raymakers, Facilities Management. Yeah, I can tell by the way you're smiling. Is that, did I come close? Close, there you go. Thank you for not embarrassing me too much. Kevin Smith, Information Technology. Jeffrey Vigil, Juvenile Services. Brian Wallace, the Sheriff's Department. These are our five-year employees. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> now for our 10-year employees. Quabina Asar. Sheriff's Office, and she's not even, not even here. <laughs> Mary Ann Clifton, County Criminal Court Number Seven. <clears throat> Marina Cruz, Public Health. Christina Fett, 141st District Court. Dietro Kiel, Medical Examiner's Office. Anita Kib, Kibby, Ta Kibby? Kibby, Tax Office. Michael McNicholas, Sheriff's Office. Tanya Mosley, Sheriff's Office. James Munga, Sheriff's Office. William Ozzy, Precinct 4. Laura Remington, Domestic Relations Office. Dennis Samago, Sheriff's Office. Larry Sams, Sheriff's Office. 
Tanjay Sieb, Human Services. Scott Siebert, Sheriff's Office. And Patrick Wilson, Facilities Management. Let's give these 10 year employees. Thank y'all. Now for our 15 years, Joseph Adams, Sheriff's Department. Adela Argon, Public Health. <coughs> Was I close? Thank you. Matthew Dolan, Sheriff's Office. Cynthia Fisher, District Clerk's Office. Ciceron Glover, Sheriff's Office. Ronald Huseman, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Joshua Keenan, Domestic Relations. Jessica Morgan, Sheriff's Office. Lakeisha Person, Sheriff's Office. Jack Roach, Precinct 3. Okay. Angela Silventes, Sheriff's Office. Shara Thornton, Sheriff's Office. Reginald Washington, Sheriff's Office. And Michael Webster, Transportation Services. Let's give these 15 years. Thank you. Now for our 20 year employees, Dwayne Barrett, Public Health, Dixie Brasano, Criminal District Attorney's Office, David <coughs> Bowles, Constable's Office, Precinct 2. Amanda Key, Precinct 3. Kenesha King, Elections. Teresa Colinkin. Yeah, we're going to work on that one. Is, she, is Teresa here? I just knew I wouldn't embarrass her. She's with the district clerk's office. Do you know how to pronounce it? I'm not looking at somebody behind you, Wilder. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I take it that that's a no. You talking about Maria? No, I'm talking about Teresa. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Kukulay. What? She is in here today. Well, I figured that much. <laughs> now, how, how did you pronounce that last name? Kukulay. Well, I'm not, I don't feel near as bad. <laughs> Tim Lemire, <laughs> Juvenile <laughs> Services. <laughs> Tim, thank your mother for naming you Tim. <laughs> Guadalupe Martinez, Juvenile Services. Delsa Perez, County Clerk's <laughs> Office. Rufus Runnels, Sheriff's Office. Michelle Say, or C, County Criminal Court Number Four. Shelly Smith, Tax Office. You can thank your mother, too. And Rose Young, Public Health. These are our 20-year employees. Let's get on with <laughs> Now for our 25 and plus, um, I give them a call, and we have an opportunity to talk. I talked with uh, one that uh, will not be here today. <laughs> I had tried to call her a couple of times and my office forgot to kind of put up there that she was on vacation in Hawaii. So when I called her again this morning and it sounded kind of desperate, she did return the phone call and she says, uh, I'm not going to be able to make it today, I'm in Hawaii. And I said, oh, so it's about 3 o'clock in the morning. And she says, that's right. <laughs> it is. And I said, well... <coughs> I would say I'm sorry, but I don't have very much pity on you for the fact that you're in Hawaii. So, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's a burden that we all must bear it sometimes. And aloha. Aloha. Uh, our first 25-year employee that we're going to uh, get to this morning is Travis Baker. 
with information technology. Uh, started out in the sheriff's department and uh, then was a jailer and then six years later uh, moved over to IT as a programmer. Um, and it's uh, one of the lead developer programmers nowadays, uh, today. Uh, when I ask him about a um, memorable moment, I'll tell most of it. Uh, when he was working, they were developing a program in the medical examiner's office, and they were just working almost around the clock, and they had gotten, uh, you know, the, the staff just got real close, and they just, you know, they were almost like, you know, brothers and sisters, and so he said, I remember that, and there were quite a few funny things that occurred during that time frame, and we're just going to leave it at that, because if I tell those kind of things, then the next month, nobody will talk to me. <laughs> I ask them about memorable moments and they laugh about the way you laughed right there, but they won't tell the rest of the story. Uh, when I asked Travis what he liked most, he said, I love the people I've had a chance to work with, but I also love working with the, di with the different citizens and folks like that that I've had an opportunity to interact with and work with over the years. Uh, he said, I also enjoy the fact that we'll go in and we'll take a program and we'll almost just completely tear it apart and then we'll rebuild. And I have the ability and the and uh, flexibility and the opportunity to do that. He said, I really love the flexibility um, in the work that I do. Travis, thank you very, very much for the 25 years of service you've given me. Thank you. Next is uh, Tommy Cox with IT. Now, we've got, this month we had three IT folks that were uh, here for 25 years, and we had a whole bunch from the Sheriff's Department. And, and one of the folks that I had an opportunity to talk with over the time, you know, what they said is they, they, they've grown up with these people. They've had an opportunity to really know them. And, you know, when I mentioned the, the six other folks from the Sheriff's Department, uh, the, the person in the Sheriff's Department that I was talking to says, yeah, we, we all started together and we see each other and it's, it's just kind of like we, we keep up with one another as we're going along. Uh, Tommy started out uh, in the county clerk's office and worked there, I guess, for about uh, 23 years and is now working in the record center. Um, his mom worked in the district clerk's office for over 23 years. And his grandfather worked in Precinct 1 for over 25 years. So again, it's the history. He said when his, mom, when his mom was working in the district clerk's office, he had an opportunity. He'd go visit with her. And, and one of the folks that was working, one time I guess he took, he had his eighth grade picture from his yearbook, and he took that along with him. And, and um, I, I know I've got this story. I'm not telling it quite the right way, but it, that's not surprising either. Uh, and there's a, a person in that department, Charlotte Hogan Price, mm -hmm. who still has that portrait on her desk, and it has been there now for 34 years. And, you know, and he, it just happened as a result of him going and having lunch with his mom. I, I, it's just, it's one of those things that just happens. Um, he said, I love the folks that I have had a chance to work with. Um, he said, it's a great place to work. And he said, everybody gets along. And he said, you know, if you talk with other folks that are working in other counties, it's sometimes it's just not that way. And we hear that and we see that as we go to conferences and as we go to meetings. And sometimes we just take for granted the environment that we work in. And that environment comes as a result of the folks that we work with and that we work for. And so I want to thank the supervisors. I want to thank the department heads and the leaders. But I also want to thank all of you as employees for treating each other with respect and for making it a place that we enjoy working in and feeling like we can come and uh, that the people around us care about the people around us. And I think that's so, so very important. Tommy, thank you for being one of those people and for being with the county for 25 years. <laughs> Next is Mark McCrary, also with Information Technology, also for 25 years. 
started in the data services area, was in uh, the county clerk's office for a while, then uh, back in IT, is a part of the integration team right now. Um, when I asked him about memorable moments, he's, he, and I kind of referred to you yesterday in the budget hearings, uh, he made the comment, he said, well, the mainframe is going to be going away in two years. And I said, so you're telling me the mainframe is going to be going away in two years? And he said, no, I've been hearing that for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still here. Now, I've been assured that it's gone away and that it's in the cloud somewhere right now. But I'm not convinced. I think it's still lingering around here someplace. Um, he said, I really have enjoyed the challenges uh, that we, you know, that are constantly put before us in the IT area. He said, I really enjoy the opportunity to work with the folks that I've had a chance to work with over the years. He said, I never thought I'd be here this long. You know, I, you know, I was going to be here for three or four years, get a little experience, and then head off. And he said, it's, you know, it's just a great place. Uh, it's a great place to work. Martin, thank you very much for your 25 years. Now, I know that these folks up here are going to start worrying about the order that I'm calling these folks in. And quite honestly, I probably will too. But I think I've got them. You're, t you're checking them off over there, right? So you, if we get to the end and I had not got one of them checked off, you check them off because... They're a little bit different depending upon where I'm where I'm looking. <coughs> Next, I'm going to call up Laura Watts. Is Laura, there's Laura. She was the one that was kind of watching out for me and helping me because I was missing one of the folks in the Sheriff's Department. I wasn't sure whether he was going to be here or not. Laura started off in the, uh, she's been here with us for 25 years. Started in the old Belknap uh, jail as a clerk and then went to the bond desk. Spent some time in uh, crime scene and internal affairs. Uh, spent a little time in patrol, was promoted to sergeant in the judicial area, and now is back in internal affairs. And I asked her about memorable moments, and she says, well, I could tell you, no, I can't tell you about a lot in internal affairs. <laughs> so we had to kind of skip over that group. But she said the crime scene, there was a lot of stuff in the crime scene area that uh, would be memorable. And, she said, some of it not so good to talk about, but it was memorable. And again, see, that's if, if she tells me and I say that to you, then nobody talks to me for the rest of the day. She said, I really have had an opportunity, like the people that I've had a chance to work with, um, and have been working with them for 25 years. Again, I think you're probably the one that I was talking with that said, you know, I know all these folks. I, I started with them, and we've just kept track, and, you know, we'll pass one another, and it, it's just, you know, it's, it's the stability of the county, and again, uh, hearing it's, it's not infighting. We don't, it's not like we're always just trying to one-up one another or embarrass one another. It's a matter that we try working together uh, and having that good working relationship. And, you know, uh, another comment that you made, and I think it really kind of talks to the whole thing, is that we don't look to the short term. We're not looking at the next day, but we're looking for the long term. And somebody who's been here 25 years, you're looking out there that long term. Um, she said, I remember getting my first paycheck. And she says, I was young and I was, I, I started looking, I saw this line that said retirement. Mm -hmm. And they had taken a full 7% out of my check, and I was saying, retirement, I need it now. The heck with this retirement business. She says after about that 15th, 20th year, she said that retirement line began to look pretty comfortable. <laughs> and uh, she's pretty grateful now that they started it back on that first paycheck and that they've continued that. And, uh, you know, I think often that a lot of folks, that first paycheck, and they see that retirement coming out, and they think, man, that's a lot of money, and I could use that money right now. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, it is a lot of money, but you'll be able to use it a lot, too, when you get ready to retire. And we've got a great retirement system, and more times than not, uh, when people have been here 10 or 15 years, they begin <laughs> to look at that, and they say, now, wait a minute. Maybe I thought I was going to go someplace else, but that retirement is a pretty good benefit, and maybe I ought to just stay where I'm at. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, 
it is a good benefit and we're very fortunate to have it and uh, it's well funded and well invested so um, you you can you can feel safe with that um, it's it, it's good Laura thank you for the 25 years you've given to me. Next is Jerry Rucker. Jerry's been with the Sheriff's Office for 25 years, started out as a clerk in Green Bay, um, then was a jailer at Belknap, got his uh, peace officer's license, moved over in the administration area. Uh, we remembered that we had seen him down here talking about vehicles. Back, I guess that was during Sheriff Williams's. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we, we, we understand. Um, he started the records department in the sheriff's. Before he had done this, we did not have a records department in the sheriff's office. And he's still in charge of the record department today. Uh, when, he, when the records department was created, they had to go through over 25,000 boxes and found all kinds of things from snakes to body parts yeah it was yeah I saw the look on some of y'all's faces when I said that it was you it was 25,000 boxes um, what he liked most was the fact that the office had just been very good to him. I mean, they've always, again, we've, we've, we've got that family attitude. He had some family emergencies over the years, and, and they've always circled the wagons and been there to support and to help. Uh, he said everyone has always tried to help each other out when they would go through a time when they needed that help. Um, he said, I've really enjoyed working here. Um, he said, again, just kind of in closing, that everybody does, goes that extra step to help one another out. Jerry, thank you for being one of those people, and, and I know you appreciate the fact that you received that help when you needed that help. Uh, thank you for your service. <laughs> Next is Robert Faust in the Sheriff's Department, 25 years. There's Robert. Um, Robert has been at the Correction Center when it was new, then he was in patrol. He spent time in training, uh, was in narcotics, and in the HIDA effort, uh, was back in patrol, was in judicial and warrants for a little bit, um, and now is back in patrol as a lieutenant. Um, his memorable moment was the time that he spent in HIDA. Um, that's a joint effort, and we're still participating in that. Uh, but he said, you know, what I like the most is the opportunities that I've had. And, and as I just discussed above, you, you hear all of the different opportunities. And it's a chance to um, be in the same area, be in the same department, same employer, but at the same time be able to see a lot of variety. He said um, the one thing that he has really enjoyed is the fact that he has gotten to see a much bigger view of law enforcement from with his time in the county. Uh, and Robert, we appreciate very, very much the 25 years you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Mary McCrack uh, in the Sheriff's Office. Started off as a clerk, went to uh, the old Belknap as a detention officer, uh, was also at Cold Springs. Uh, for a while in Green Bay and then back to Belknap. Uh, she's now working in the judicial area on the north door of the family center. And um, she said, you know, what I have enjoyed most was the security of the county, uh, the camaraderie that she uh, enjoys and that is enjoyed over there. She said, I'm retired military. Thank you for your service to, to your country. And thank you for your continued service here to Tarrant County. She says, I really enjoyed the years uh, that I've had thus far with Tarrant County and hope to be here many years to come. And Mary, we hope you are too. Thank you very much for your 25 years. <laughs> Next is Brian Nicholson. 
Um, where's Brian? There's Brian. Started off in the correction center in the booking area and then went to judicial. Uh, spent about nine years there in the family law center and is now the bailiff with Judge Gallagher in the 396th court. Um, he said, over the years, I've made a lot of uh, great friends. He said, you know, one of the things I like most is I don't have to worry about that paycheck bouncing. <laughs> and, uh, and it's the security. It goes back to the fact that it is uh, the security of that. Uh, he said it's just a great place to work. It's one big family, and that's something that he's always enjoyed about it. Uh, he said, I'm not planning. He said, I'm here, and I'm not planning on going anywhere. We hope you don't, and we appreciate very much uh, your 25 years of service, Brian. Thank you. Still checking off over. Next is Alton Radford. He's on vacation this week. He was the one we were kind of watching for. Uh, I hadn't been able to get a hold of him, and I, I, I don't like to ask people to come forward and get to ask you all those questions that I ask you over the phone in front of everybody. Uh, but so he's on vacation. If you see Alton when he gets back, please congratulate him on his 25 years of service. Um, Carl Todd, uh, 25 years with the Sheriff's Department. He also will not be able to make it to court today. So when you see Carl, please uh, tell him how much we appreciate his 25 years of service. Uh, next is Lisa Morton. There's Lisa. She is 25 years with uh, and is now in the 396th District Court. She started out as a court reporter in CDC number two and then moved to trial room B for a while and now is in Judge Gallagher's court. So uh, two of you are celebrating uh, your 25 years today. Uh, when I asked her about memorable moments, she's meant to mention a couple of trials. She mentioned the Banditos trial that we had uh, last year. When I asked her what she liked most, it was the great benefits that the county had. Uh, again, folks get along and are pleasant to work with. Um, also, that she said, the county is, is always there for me. Not only are my uh, co-workers there for me, but also just overall, when, when I've had issues, they've been there to support and help me through those issues. Um, she said, I have had some great opportunities uh, and have had opportunities to go to other counties and to work in other counties. I think you said you drive an hour to and from... She drives here from Somerville County every day. And she said, I've had an opportunity and had opportunities to work for other places, but there's no place that I could see that I'd want to work but Tarrant County. Uh, and she says, Judge Gallagher is a great judge to work for. We appreciate it, Lisa, very much. Your 25 years of service to Tarrant County. Next was Michelle Moore, and Michelle Moore, 25 years with the county clerk's office, and she is out of town and uh, won't be able to make it today. So we'll congratulate her when she gets back, and, uh, and if she's tan, you'll know where she's been. <laughs> uh, next is Pam Powell with the county clerk's office, 25 years. She's also in Hawaii? I don't think so. That's a tragedy. I guess for she wasn't sure she was going to be able to make it, but 25 years. So when you see Pam, thank her for her 25 years of service. Um, and then finally is Maria Lara, District Clerk's Office, 30 years. There she is. Started out as a part-time file clerk uh, is, and is now in the position, one of the lead clerk positions. Uh, when I asked her about memorable moments, she said, you know, just over the 30 years of watching downtown Fort Worth and the changes that have occurred uh, in downtown over the years, and, and I, you know, I can relate to just 22 years of that and just seeing the things that have changed since the time that I've been on the court. She says, I love the security and the, the benefits. She says, we're always busy, so, uh, you know, time goes back quickly. Uh, she said, I have really enjoyed working with the judges in the, uh, the criminal section. Uh, 
five years ago when we talked, she, you know, her two children, one was about to graduate from high school and one was in middle school. Uh, and she said it just seemed like, you know, time flew by and that she had just been recognized for 20 years at that point. Um, so today we're recognizing her for 30 and she said, man, the time's even gone by quicker. And since the last time we talked, her uh, older son is, uh, is graduated from high school, is working full time, but at the same time going to TCC, uh, trying to, you know, kind of get through that. And her daughter is a junior in, in high school. And she says, you know, we're just, just living day to day and trying to just help the kids to, to grow up and to, to be ready to, to face the world. Thank you very, very much, Maria, for the 30 years. I hope all your names are checked over there, because if they're not, I'm in trouble. They're all checked. All right. 965 years of service. 965 years of service. Thank you very, very much. We have refreshments back in 504C, and Wilder's getting up like he's about to head back that way first. Check, check security back here. Yeah. Uh, thank you all again very much, and uh, we just we would not be this great of a place to work without you. Thank you.
He may be 80, but he's still got a better memory than me. I forgot to uh, move that we approve the minutes, so if I could have a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously, unanimously with four of the five, almost unanimously. Um, Court members, you have before you the consent agenda. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the consent agenda. <coughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I, yeah, he's here you? this time. So you're here. But I'm here. Um, Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of court, we have two additional items this morning. The first, we are rec we are requesting that the commissioner's court take the following actions. And before I start, let me say this is all part of the budget process and that, that we're moving forward to, uh, and we're going to be setting the, uh, the tax rates and the budgets on September 11th. But there are certain activities or processes we need to go through before we get there. So we're asking the commissioner's court to, to take the following actions as it relates to Tarrant County's Tarrant County government's uh, tax rates. We ask that you receive and file the proposed effective and rollback tax rate information for Tarrant County government, which is as follows. The effective tax rate is 0 0.230119 for $100 valuation. The rollback tax rate is 0 0.248133 per dollars per $100 valuation. The current tax rate is 0 0.244 per $100 valuation. And the proposed tax rate uh, that staff is recommending is 0.234 per $100 valuation, which is a one cent reduction in the tax rate. We're simply asking that you receive and file those numbers at this time. So move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now, we're also asking that because of, of your previous action, we're asking that the commissioner's court call public hearings for August 21st and September 4th, 2018, which will occur in the commissioner's courtroom beginning at 10 a.m. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, members of the court. If we can move to item number two. This concerns the Tarrant County Hospital District's uh, effective and rollback tax rates, and these are some of the actions that um, we're requesting you to do. We're asking you to receive and file the proposed effective and rollback tax rates for the Tarrant County Hospital District as follows. The effective tax rate is 0 .213546 uh, dollars per $100 evaluation. The rollback tax rate is 0 0.230503 dollars per $100 valuation. The current tax rate is 0 0.224429 per $100 valuation. And the proposed tax rate, which is the same as the current tax rate, is 0 0.224429 per $100 valuation. We're requesting that you uh, receive and file these numbers. So move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now we're going to ask you to take a record vote as it relates to the maximum proposed tax rate of 0.224429, which is the current tax rate for tax year 2018. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? 
Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And then finally, members of the court, we're requesting that you call a uh, public hearings for both August 21st and September 4th, 2018, here in the Tarrant County Commissioner's Courtroom, beginning at 10 a.m. in the morning. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. Ms. Tidwell. We have one item we're asking the court to consider this morning. If you may recall back in 2016, the county agreed to accept an uh, irrevocable letter of credit from the Federal Home Loan Bank for an amount not to exceed $150 million as our collateral for our deposits at J.P. Morgan Chase. And that uh, particular letter of credit is on an annual basis and requires that you accept a renewal. So we're asking that the court approve amendment number two to the Federal Home Loan Bank irrevocable letter of credit. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> no. Motion passes unanimously. And then our other item is we're asking the court to receive and file the auditor's report for our review of the financial system and controls for Justice of the Peace, Precinct 2. Move to receive and file. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Move to receive and file personnel agenda. Second. We have a motion to second. Receive and file personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Good morning and thank you. We have one additional item, that's item two. We're asking the court to approve the departmental reorganization for the tax office. Uh, as detailed in your court communique, the court is being asked to approve this reorg effective October 1st. This reorg will result in the reclassification of 34 motor vehicle specialist ones to motor vehicle specialist two positions and also the reclass of a motor vehicle clerk two. This request was submitted during the budget process and was submitted timely to the HR department. HR has um, done its due diligence, met with tax, and has conducted the uh, requisite audits, and we consider uh, these matches to existing positions. The impact to the general fund will be approximately $170,500 thereabouts, including fringe benefits. This amount, uh, or this funding rather, is uh, included in the proposed FY19 budget. Questions? Move for approval. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? So, I mean, these were put in in March, <coughs> went through the job reclasses, and went through that process. Correct. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Beecham. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Your Honor, other members of the court, we have eight items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid order recommendation for bid 2018-161. This is a bid for the sale of recycled paper. Recommendation be toward a pre enterprise basis awarding the high bidder Evergreen Fiber Sales, who will purchase our sorted office paper at $221.25 per ton, our sorted white ledger at $351.25 per ton. Move for approval. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. Number two item, uh, a bid award recommendation for bid 2018-118, signing a contract for temporary health care business staffing. <clears throat> recommendation to be awarded on a per enterprise basis, awarding to the primary, secondary, alternate one, two, and three vendors as shown in your court communicator. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. If we can skip to item number four, another bid award recommendation for bid 2018-135, signing a contract for dry bulk hydraulic cement, recommendation be toward a per enterprise basis, awarding to Ash Grove Cement Company. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number five. Also, a bid award recommendation for bid 2018-140, signing a contract for microfiche, microfilm equipment maintenance and supplies. Recommendation for each award on a pre-enterprise basis, awarding to Office Store Depot Incorporated. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number six, again, another uh, bid award recommendation for bid 2018-154. This annual contract for traffic control equipment. Recommendation would be to award on a pre-enterprise basis, discount from price list, awarding to the primary and secondary vendors by section as shown in your court communique. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number seven. Uh, and I'm going to do that after close. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Um, item number eight. Item in regards to bid 2018-020. This is an annual contract for graphic and photographic supplies. We originally brought this to Commissioner's Court on November 14th, 2017. It was approved in the court order uh, 126585, awarded to, to seven vendors, uh, like five different categories for bindery supplies. Um, during the contract period, the contract uh, amount uh, is in the neighborhood of about $18,000 uh, per the term of the contract. Um, we actually placed a or ordered uh, and placed 11 purchase orders uh, to date. Uh, last one we we placed, uh, which was for an expenditure of $170. Uh, we realized that there were some errors uh, in the original spreadsheet that we um, uh, provided to Commissioner Court. I believe the best the best way to correct this mistake uh, is to uh, terminate the contract and rebid with revised specifications. Move for approval to terminate the contract. Yes, sir. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item, item in regards to RFQ 2018-091, staying a contract for temporary health care personnel. Uh, we are seeking contract approval from the court for the three vendors as shown in your court from the K. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Are there any appointments today? There being none, then I do believe we have an insurance certificate that we need. Yes, Your Honor. We have. We are asking that the commissioner's court approve a certificate of self-insurance in lieu of a bond for Jack Ely, who will be a reserve deputy constable in Constable Precinct Six. Move approval. Second. We have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Court members, you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Maines. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have one item we'd like to talk to you about this morning. This is item A. It's a compensation system survey update. Uh, Mr. Glogowski from Corn Ferry is here to address the court at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Paul. Judge, commissioners, how are you? Good. Here we go. So we have a brief presentation uh, summarizing the results of our analysis <coughs> and recommendations uh, for this year, or the upcoming year, I'm sorry. And I will direct this to slide five, six from here. I can't read it. So this is a, a typical uh, summary page that we've used historically. It maps out on the left-hand column the different policy groups you have. So each of these groups have different salary, a set of salary ranges that the intent of those ranges is to keep those ranges in line with the market target that you guys have been targeting over the past years for each particular group. The, uh, so it names, the, it names the organization or group that we're targeting, um, kind of the market that we use at a high level definition. Is it a national market, a local market? Uh, kind of a, a set of words that define how that particular group's salary ranges align with the marketplace, given the new study. We underlined some words in that column to draw your eyes to some certain words there. And what we're chasing is how close are you to the target that you've established is P25. So you'll notice uh, some groups are slightly below the target that you've established over the history of the, of the program, like the exempts are 2.5% in general below the target. Um, 
and so forth down the page. Most of these groups, if you look at this year's analysis versus last year's analysis, have basically maintained their position to the market with a few minor, minor exceptions. Uh, so the exempt and non-exempt. Um, if you said, how far were we from P25 last year for that group? How far away are we from P25 this year for this, those groups? They dropped just ever so slightly, like maybe a half a percent or a percent. Statistically, they dropped, but in essence, you're real close to what your target is for each of the groups. Uh, we put payroll information on there just to give a sense of uh, the size of each group. And when you make a adjustment to one group versus another group, obviously the spend per group is changing because of the size of the, the payroll is so large. So your, your, your payroll we had when we took the picture was about $243 million. I think when I started it was around $50 million. Our recommendations, um, uh, in a few slides, we're going to show you the actual range changes by percent. Uh, so we are making changes, or we're recommending making changes to each of those structures, exempt, non-exempt, law enforcement, et cetera. And we are trying to align those recommendations a little bit more specific, not just by group, but by grade in group. So if the craft employees, as an example, at the higher grades are farther behind the market than the lower grades, we might represent that through a, a recommendation that says let's move those top grades a little bit more as a percentage than the lower grades. And I'll give you, a, we'll show you that slide in a second. Uh, those would affect your um, uh, hard costs when we move a range. You typically then, anybody that falls below a target level within the range, you adjust to the range. Uh, uh, at, at max in hire, 90 percent of max in hire, for the step plan in law enforcement, they get those automatically when the value of the steps change. So that's your kind of immediate cost. You also, as you know, <laughs> have a PFP process. Your what we would call your merit budget, uh, and based on where you where you reside this year, what we anticipate the market doing in the coming year, we are re we are recommending to the court about a 3.1 percent merit slash PFP. I understand that Ange uh, will bring you some hard, hard costs to these next week in court. So in this particular presentation, we do not have costs in here. Here's an example, maybe, maybe a poor example, but we'll, the next two slides will be better. Here's the exempt and management grades. It's the value of the current midpoint, the value of the recommended midpoint we're making, and it represents what percent change to the values of those ranges. Again, those are based on the relationship of the current range to market. So we're saying you're a little bit behind market. Let's move those grades up. In this case, all grades exempt 2.5, all grades in management 2%. So when you say raise, uh, when you're talking about recommend midpoint raise by this, does that also, are you also therefore increasing the maximum in the minimum? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I should have said that. So they, they go in tandem. If, if the midpoint goes up, 2.5%, the minimum will go up 2.5, the maximum will go up 2.5. I should have been more clear, I apologize. Good question. On 11, slide 11, you'll note here we have non-exempt IT and IT, IT non-exempt, IT exempt. You'll notice now each grade uh, generally might have a different percent increase recommended. So it suggests for your non-exempt non grades that the higher you are in grade, as an employee in a job, you're a little farther behind market than those lower in the grade, uh, in lower grades. So what we're trying to do is adjust the grades by a little bit more percentage uh, in tune with what the market's telling us on a grade by grade basis. So you'll see a fluctuation in grades. And then lastly, the craft, you'll notice again, the higher end jobs are a little bit farther away from market than the lower end jobs. And the exact opposite when you look at law enforcement, we're recommending the bottom grades kind of those uh, places where you have high, historically high turn. Uh, it's been much better, it looks like, over the past years. But historically, the entry rate where you're competing for that entry-level talent can be challenging. So we're moving those, we're recommending the court to move those grades up um, at the bottom end versus the top end. The top end are better aligned with the market. And then uh, a visual of what does it all say um, uh, at a broad level. The court, I think this is my 20th or 21st year of working with the court. Uh, years and years ago established this overall target we based on the fact that for for most groups for most groups you have someone had decided years ago and it's stuck it has stuck 
compare to both a market that contains for-profit and not-for-profit employers. So that might, basically the market at large who you might be competing for with talent and you set a target at the 25th percentile. If you took all Tarrant County employees, all their pay, all their, all their <coughs> midpoints, if you will, and you plotted it out as a visual, you're both, you're both generally paying at the market target you've established and your policies or your grades are very close to what your philosophy is. And so that's been the goal of the plan and you're pretty much staying on track in terms of your goal. There's other slides in there that represent this same picture for each group. We historically haven't gone to those slides, but we've made them, we've made them available for you as a court member. I'd be happy to look at any of those if you'd like, but that basically concludes the summary of, of our discussion that I had prepared. Thank you, Paul, for your consistency over 21 years. It helps to have the same God. Okay, thank you. Now, I know that, uh, Ange, next week, are you going to be bringing up and showing some of the comparisons and how we compare with, uh, you might as well just go ahead and come on up here. <laughs> you think you're going to get away with it, but you're not. I know that we've looked at different charts. Are you going to bring those charts up to kind of show how each one of those different grade positions competes with surround, some of the surrounding or comparable numbers? Or did you plan on getting into that level of detail? Probably not that level of detail. What we'll talk about next week is our recommendations, <clears throat> which will be similar to Hayes, but a little bit, excuse me, Corn Ferry, but now, a little bit different. Paul's been with us for 21 years, but yes. it's been under a, uh, a hey, bunch of different yes. aliases. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do that next week, along with some costs of the various recommendations. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions at this time? Well, I'd like to... Uh, Excuse me. The in the IT world, um, the employees in the IT department have to keep up with their certifications and uh, new technology and so forth. How are we um, providing that uh, education right now? Are they are the IT employees responsible for paying for those certifications? You wow. might not want to quote me, but. Chris, I think they pay for a fair amount of it within the IT budget, and Chris can. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Uh, yes, uh, IT uh, for the uh, certifications that are required uh, by each of the job categories, uh, we do provide uh, training through professional development. Okay. And we do one-time payment for that certification, but only one time if the employee fails, because we typically package that training with uh, the cost of the certification. But if they fail, they are required to pay out of pocket to uh, up still to obtain that certification. Okay. So that includes all the technology, Microsoft, <coughs> Cisco. For those that are required, all of our employees are eligible through our education and training uh, dollars, which were uh, included in our budget, okay. to get professional development training. They all, most of them have uh, professional development plans okay. that reflect uh, what they need. And we pay for training along those lines. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Paul, I'm going to assume that the, that the recommendations that y'all made were made based upon what you showed us in the 2018 market analysis. If they were above or below, then you reduced or increased those percentage recommendations. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Members of court, just one quick comment as it relates to item B. As you know, for the last several weeks, we've been discussing about the possibility of calling a bond election for the November 6, 2018 election. What you will see in the, your packet next week and what will be an action item next week is the resolution and the authorization to call that bond package. Also, the Hospital District Board of Managers on Thursday, this coming <coughs> Thursday, the day after tomorrow, there is a resolution of support <coughs> on their agenda also for their approval. Thank you. Thank you. There being no further uh, business at this time, then we will recess our open meeting to proceed to close to discuss items exempted under Section 551.
Don't get started yet. We ain't, we ain't hit the gavel. Closed session will now address the following matter. We're seeking a contract approval from the court in regards to RFQ 2017-129 and a contract for managed network and implementation services. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously, showing Commissioner Johnson not. Thank you. There being no further business, we're adjourned. Great.